Hello and welcome to this lecture on body organization. This is Dr. Stewart and I'll be guiding you through this topic. Let's get started. The body is organized into levels with each level being formed by the levels below it. To put it another way, the cells are the building blocks of the body. Cells come together to make tissues, tissues come together to make organs, and organs come together to make systems. The body as a whole is made up of various body systems. The illustration on screen shows how the body is organized. It starts with the cell on the upper left hand side and follows the arrows counterclockwise to demonstrate the body's organization. There are a number of combining forms commonly used when discussing body organization. We begin introducing those forms on this side and continue with them for the next several slides. Abdomino, adipo, aero, entero. An example of a term using the combining form entero is anterior, which means pertaining to the front. Brachio, bucco, cardio, caldo. Cephalo, cervico, chondro, cranio, crino, cruro, cyto, dermo, or dermato, both meaning skin. An example of a term using the combining form dermato is dermatosis, which means an abnormal condition of the skin. Disto, dorso, entero, epithelo, gastro, gluteo, gynaco, halo, hemato or hemato meaning blood. An example of a medical term using the combining form hemato is hematology. Hematology means the study of blood. Histo, immuno, infero, inguino, laryngo or laryngo, latero, lingulo, lumbo, lympho, medio, musculo, nephro, meaning kidney. Nephromegaly is a medical term which uses the combining form nephro. This term means enlarged kidney. Neuro means nerve. An example of a medical term which uses the combining form neuro is neuroplasty. Neuroplasty means surgical repair of a nerve. Ophthalmo, ortho, oro. Oto, parieto, pelvo, pedo, peritoneo, pleuro, postero, procto, proximo, pubo, Pulmono, rhino means nose. An example of a medical term using the combining form rhino is rhinitis, such as allergic rhinitis. Rhinitis means inflammation of the nose. Spino, supero, theco, or theco. Thoraco, topico, uro or urino, vasculo, veno, ventro, vertebro, viscero, meaning internal organ. An example of a medical term using viscero is visceral. 
visceral means pertaining to internal organs. We've already discussed that cells form tissues, tissues form organs, organs form systems, and systems form the body. Now, let's look at each of these structures, starting with cells. The cell is the fundamental unit of life, and cells have all the properties of being alive. They respond to stimuli, engage in metabolic activity, and reproduce themselves. All tissues and organs are formed by cells. The combining form, cyto, and the suffix, logi, combine to make the medical term cytology. Cytology is the study of cells and their function. Individual cells perform functions for the body like reproduction, hormone secretion, energy production, and excretion. Special cells in the body carry out very specific functions, like the contraction of muscle cells and the electrical impulse transmission of nerve cells. The cells in the body come in different shapes and sizes. However, at some point in their life cycle, all cells have a nucleus, a cell membrane, and cytoplasm. This figure illustrates examples of four different types of cells from the body. Even though each different type of cell has a cell membrane, a nucleus, and cytoplasm, each one has a unique shape. This shape is dependent upon the cell's location and specific function. Tissues are the next level of organization. Tissues are formed when like cells are grouped together and function together to perform an activity. The combining form histo means tissue. The combination of histo with the suffix logi gives us the medical term histology, which means the study of tissue. There are four types of tissue in the body, muscle tissue, epithelial tissue, connective tissue, and nervous tissue. Muscle tissue produces movement in the body by contracting or shortening in length. Muscle tissue is made of individual cells called muscle fibers. There are three basic types of muscle tissue, skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, and cardiac muscle. Skeletal muscle is attached to bone. Smooth muscle is found in internal organs like the intestine and the uterus. Cardiac muscle is found only in the heart. Epithelial tissue or epithelium is found throughout the body. It forms the lining of the internal organs and the skin. Epithelial tissue is made up of close packed cells that function to form a protective barrier like the skin, absorb like the lining of the intestine, secrete like the sweat glands, and excrete wastes like the kidney tubules. Connective tissue supports and protects the body. Its function depends upon where it is located. Connective tissue can appear in many different forms, including adipose, bone, cartilage, and tendons. Nervous tissue is made up of cells called neurons. It forms the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. Nervous tissue allows for the conduction of electrical impulses to send information to the brain and then back to the body. This figure shows the different types of tissues and their location within the body, such as the connective tissue located in the adipose layer of the skin. Organs are made of several different types of tissues working together as a unit to perform special functions. For example, the stomach contains muscle fibers, nervous tissue, and epithelial tissue. A system is made up of several organs working together in a coordinated manner to perform complex functions. For example, the stomach plus other digestive organs, including the mouth, esophagus, liver, pancreas, small intestine, and colon, work together to ingest, digest, and absorb our food. There are multiple organ systems in the human body. The first one we will discuss is the integumentary system. The integumentary system forms a protective two-way barrier and assists in temperature regulation. Organs of the integumentary system include the skin, hair, nails, sweat glands, and sebaceous glands. Dermatologists care for the integumentary system, 
plastic surgeons work with the system too. The musculoskeletal system is next, and it is made up of the skeleton and muscles. The skeleton supports and protects the body, forms blood cells, and stores minerals. The organs of the skeleton are the bones and joints. The muscles produce movement, and the muscular system is made up of muscles. Orthopedists care for the musculoskeletal system. Orthopedic surgeons and rheumatologists also care for the muscles and skeleton. The cardiovascular system pumps blood in order to transport nutrients, oxygen, and wastes within the body. The organs of the cardiovascular system are the heart, arteries, and veins. Cardiologists care for this system. The blood, or hematic system, transports oxygen, protects against pathogens, and controls bleeding. The blood is made up of plasma, erythrocytes, leukocytes, and platelets. Hematologists study the blood. The lymphatic system protects the body from disease and invasion by pathogens. Organs of the lymphatic system are the lymph nodes, lymphatic vessels, spleen, thymus gland, and tonsils. Immunologists care for the lymphatic system. The respiratory system brings oxygen into the body and removes carbon dioxide from the body. Organs of the respiratory system include the nasal cavity, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchial tubes, and lungs. The gastrointestinal system, or digestive system, is responsible for ingesting, digesting, and absorbing nutrients. Organs of the gastrointestinal system are the oral cavity, salivary glands, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, colon, liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. Gastroenterologists care for the gastrointestinal system. Proctologists also provide care for the system. The urinary system filters waste products out of the blood and removes them from the body. Organs of the urinary system include the kidneys, ureters, urinary bladder, and urethra. Nephrologists care for the urinary system, as do urologists. The female reproductive system produces eggs for reproduction, provides a place for the growing baby, and nourishes the infant after it's born. Organs of the female reproductive system include the ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, vagina, vulva, and breasts. Gynecologists care for the female reproductive system. Obstetricians also provide care to the system, typically during pregnancy. The male reproductive system produces sperm for reproduction. Organs of the male reproductive system are the testes, epididymis, vas deferens, penis, seminal vesicles, prostate gland, and bulbourethral gland. Urologists specialize in the male reproductive system. The endocrine system is responsible for regulating the metabolic activities of the body. Organs of the endocrine system are the pituitary gland, pineal gland, or pineal gland, thyroid gland, parathyroid glands, thymus gland, adrenal glands, pancreas, ovaries, and testes. Endocrinologists care for the system. The nervous system receives sensory information and coordinates the body's response to that information. Organs of the nervous system are the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. Neurologists care for the nervous system. Neurosurgeons also care for the system. We will also incorporate the special senses provided by the eyes and ears into our study of organ systems. The special sense of sight involves the eyes as the primary organs. The eyes are responsible for vision. Ophthalmologists care for the eye. The other special sense of hearing involves the ears as the primary organs. The ears are responsible for both hearing and balance. Autorhinolaryngologists care for the ear. Now that you understand how the body is composed of systems, it's important to know anatomical terminology that applies to the entire body. This terminology enables you to correctly identify specific locations and directions when working with patients. 
The anatomical position is used to describe the positions and relationships of structures in the human body. The anatomical position is standing erect with the arms at the side of the body, the palms of the hands are facing forward, and the eyes are looking straight ahead. The legs are parallel with the feet and the toes pointing forward. For descriptive purposes, medical personnel always assume the patient is in the anatomical position, even if the patient is actually in a different position. This picture shows the man standing in the anatomical position. Note that he is standing erect with the arms at the side of the body, the palms are facing forward, and the eyes are looking straight ahead. His legs are parallel with the feet and toes pointing forward. The body planes are another way medical personnel describe the body and its parts. There are three body planes, the sagittal plane, the frontal plane, and the transverse plane. The sagittal plane is also known as the median plane or mid-sagittal plane. It is a vertical plane that runs lengthwise from front to back. It divides the body into left and right portions. If a cut is made along a sagittal plane, it yields a sagittal section. The frontal plane, also called the coronal plane, is a vertical plane that runs lengthwise from side to side. It divides the body into front and back portions. A cut along the frontal plane yields a frontal or coronal section. The transverse or horizontal plane is the only plane that runs parallel to the ground. It divides the body into upper and lower portions. A cut along the transverse plane yields a transverse section. This figure illustrates the planes of the body. The frontal plane divides the body into front and back portions. The sagittal plane divides the body into left and right portions. And the transverse plane divides the body into upper and lower portions. The cross section and longitudinal section are additional ways of dividing the body and they're often used to describe internal views of structures. A cross section is produced by a slice perpendicular to the long axis of a structure. In other words, it is a plane that is horizontal to the floor. A longitudinal section is produced by a lengthwise slice along the long axis of a structure. The body may also be divided into large regions that can easily be identified externally. This screen and the following screen review the various body regions. It is super important to familiarize yourself with both the anatomical and common names for each region. The brachial region is the first region and it includes the upper extremities. It is commonly referred to as the arms. The cephalic region consists of the head, and it is commonly referred to simply as the head. The cervical region consists of the neck. It serves to connect the head to the trunk. The crural region includes the lower extremities. It is commonly referred to as the legs. The trunk contains all body regions other than the head, neck, and extremities described on the previous slide. It is also called the torso. All of the regions on this screen are part of the trunk and can be categorized as being on the front or back side of the trunk. In medical language, anterior is the word for front and posterior is the word for back. The first trunk region is the thoracic region. This is more commonly called the chest. It is found on the anterior side of the trunk and may also be called the thorax. The abdominal region is typically referred to as the abdomen. It is found on the anterior side of the trunk. The pelvic region consists of the pelvis and is also on the anterior side of the trunk. The pubic region contains the external genitals 
and is the last of the anterior trunk regions. The dorsum is a posterior trunk region. It is commonly referred to as the back. The vertebral region overlies the spinal column. It is also on the posterior side of the trunk. The final posterior region of the trunk is the gluteal region. It consists of the buttocks. This figure illustrates the anterior and posterior regions of the body described on the previous slides. Congratulations, you've reached the end of this lecture. Be sure to watch any additional lectures on this topic. And of course, you're able to return to this lecture anytime you may need a refresher. Until then, thanks for watching.